NFL teams, do you have a favorite? You know, the Bills, Giants, and Jets are out. Will you follow one this weekend or throughout the playoffs? Uh, frankly, I'm a diehard Bills fan. We ended on a good note, but uh, a little less interest now. Uh, I, I kind of like the Peyton Manning story. That That is a nice storyline to it. It'd be nice to see him come back and win the Super Bowl. Yeah. And they got a chance. They got a great defense, uh, and they looked pretty good the other day, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I think the Denver Broncos would be a sentimental pick, like you're saying there. You know, no NFL quarterback has ever won a Super Bowl for two different teams. It's never happened before, so that would be... I a... didn't realize that, but it'd just be a great story. Yeah. I, I, I think it's pretty clear that his uh, playing days are numbered, and if he could go out a winner, I mean, he's had just such a remarkable career. It would be a wonderful uh, story. Yeah, and a great sense of humor about everything, too. You know, he's been injured for most of the year, and uh, he got into the game this past weekend and then spread all the credit around. He said, you know, it really wasn't me that won the game for uh, our team. It was everyone else. And uh, I would imagine well, you, you would appreciate that, being a politician. I do indeed, and uh, I think he'll have a career making commercials when he's out of football. He's uh, pretty good, pretty funny in those that he does. Or maybe he could be a weathercaster. You never know. <laughs> I like well, your... that's, a, that's a great job because, uh, you know, it's just like a quarterback. You're just playing the percentages. It mm -hmm. might rain and it might not. It might snow, it might not. And, well, I'll, ta I'll take the forecast from uh, Assemblyman Mark Butler here out of Newport. <laughs> so. uh, where, where are you located? Winter is over, I declare it. Where are you right now, Mark, by the way? I am sitting in my dining room at home. Mm -hmm. All right. Good place to be this morning. Well, I, I've got the gas stove going, and uh, I'm all taken care of against the weather today. Nice. And, uh, you know, we have a, a topic we want to get into. There's a meeting. Um, but maybe quickly first, uh, something that we've been kicking around. Uh, Dave's been uh, asking the question about uh, President Obama's take on gun control. I know that's something that, uh, you know, you're very passionate about wanting yeah. to, to really look at, uh, in New York State specifically, the uh, SAFE Act. Um, your yeah. thoughts? Well, I think even uh, the president has, has pretty much conceded that, uh, you know, uh, what he's uh, considering isn't going to change a whole lot. It may not make a lot of difference. I, I think it's uh, more uh, an effort to burnish up his uh, legacy than to actually do something. The, the issues are societal. They're, they're, they're not about guns uh, per se and uh I, I think you're you're finding a, a cure for a problem that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And and again, the, the argument continues. You know, who's going to if you change the laws, uh, the criminals by definition are, are not going to pay any attention to them. Uh, the bad people. And uh, uh, really, all you're doing is is putting more regulation on, on the law-abiding citizen. Uh, so I think it's going down the wrong path. And I think it's uh, against the Constitution. I, I think our constitutional rights in terms of the Second Amendment are, are clearly spelled out in, in the Constitution. All Similar right. to the uh, sentiment from our own uh, Sheriff, Oneida County Sheriff Rob Mitchell, yesterday when mm -hmm. we asked him those uh, yes, questions. Yes, I, I, I like Rob. I, I like his uh, his take on this and, and, and a lot of things that he does. I have, I have great respect for him. All right. Now, Mark, uh, one of the issues we wanted to talk to you about was a concern from some residents, especially in the West Canada Valley Central School District, about some incidences of cancer in that area what's going on well exactly uh we've had a, a number of uh, uh cancers particularly pediatric cancers uh in uh and more alarming i think is they're they're kind of a rare type of uh, cancer that that uh you know i think there might be 70 nationally of this particular thing and we've had uh three or four right here locally uh a, a, a citizens group got together, uh, headed by a, a young lady named Melissa Lowell, and uh, we also have been had a, involved is uh, Ray Lenarsic. Uh, he's a former teacher at the college, and he's uh, very much involved in social issues. And he has a daughter who's who's very concerned about environmental issues. So they've they've been doing their their homework. Uh, they have asked uh, me to kind of uh, arrange things to help. Uh, uh, bring to the attention of the state officials, particularly the state health department, uh, our, our concerns. Uh, there were a couple meetings uh, months ago, and uh, quite frankly, um, I wasn't encouraged by what the health department had to say. And, it, and it's a, you know, it's a mystery. There's there's no common thread. These uh, incidences are spread out throughout the area. The Cuyahoga Valley. It's a big area. I mean, we've got three villages, a couple smaller communities, uh, uh, and it goes down toward Little Falls. Uh, 
So uh, you can't pinpoint a specific geographic area where this is occurring. It's not kids all in the same school where you might suspect uh, something in a water supply. So it's it's a mystery, but it's uh, something that, that uh, the numbers and statistics indicate to us as, as a, a, um, a matter of concern. And uh, we've been pushing the health department to uh, move forward with an investigation to look at this closely. Uh, and in the beginning, they agreed they would do that, and things seemed to kind of stall out. Uh, as part of my regular routine, I have them on my call list. I call them every uh, three weeks or a month and say, what's new, what's new. Uh, we, you know, we have legislative liaisons we, we deal through, and they're kind of the filter and, and uh you know, they're helpful, and, and uh, you know, they try and get your questions answered. But uh, I just kind of felt we needed to get a little higher up the ladder. So we were fortunate. Uh, we finally got a call from uh, from some of the uh, higher-up officials from the health department. Uh, uh, and uh, we've arranged a meeting uh, later this morning in Albany, and, and uh, we're going to assess what the progress is that they've made, uh, what they intend to do in the future. And uh, there are other issues. I mean, uh should the DEC get involved? Is this an environmental issue? Uh, I, I don't think it's something we, we want to let go of. Sure. You, you want to make sure environmental factors uh, aren't brought to bear on this. I spoke about a yes. similar issue with uh, my friend Bob Casulo, the former Syracuse football coach and a native of Little Falls. He was telling me that uh, cases of ALS, uh, the Lou Gehrig's disease, uh-huh. per, per capita in Little Falls and Dolgeville, greater than anywhere in the nation. So, uh, you well, make, uh, you still know, puzzled there was by that. Era when we were uh, weren't quite as environmentally sensitive, and, and uh, we had a lot of heavy manufacturing metals manufacturing here in the valley. And uh, one of the suspicions are that you know some some environmental waste could be buried somewhere. Uh, a lot of concern is centered around uh, the former Rose Valley landfill, which has been the target of uh, some DEC investigations. Uh, they concluded there uh, there was no imminent danger from that. But I had to tell you a personal story. I live on uh, on one of the streets in Newport, and uh, it was around Christmas time one year, and I had some trouble with some lights outside. And this had to be nine, ten o'clock at night. And I'm out there fiddling around with the lights, and a and a garbage truck rolls by. It's like nine or ten o'clock at night during the holidays, and I looked at it, and it was. From Coxsackie, New York. Now, mm-hmm. what the heck is a, a garbage truck from Coxsackie, New York, doing the rumbling up to the landfill? At Capital District, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Coxsackie is yeah. Uh, down in the Hudson Valley. South, I think it's, south it's, of the Capital District, I should south say. South of the Capital yeah, District. Right. So, uh, and and uh, the former owner, uh, who's now deceased, uh, uh, was cited for for some illegal dumping, and and I've actually talked to uh, some. People who do not want to be identified, who actually worked up there, who who actually walked me to a place where they had uh, opened up some spigots on the back of some truck. So uh, I'm still not convinced that could that that isn't a, a source of some of these issues. I know uh, one of the other uh, things they've talked about. We had these uh, towers that the Air Force uh, put up. Uh, where they did tests out of Griffiths, and uh, we are always led to believe they were just calibrating radar with those. But uh, sure, the Tanner Hill uh, and Irish Hill areas. Yeah. So some of the subsequent uh, questions and research uh, have indicated there may be a little more to that. That there might have been uh, some kind of microwave uh, activity involving those. So that that is a possibility that some have raised. Uh, but again, it's. It's peculiar because there's no area where you pinpoint. And you talk about Little Falls. Uh, that first meeting, there were a number of residents from Little Falls that, that mm-hmm. talked about uh, family members or people they knew that had uh, uh, similar types of uh, issues with cancer. So uh, mm-hmm. it's it's bigger than, than uh, we're prepared to deal with on a local level. And, and uh, we're really appealing today to the state to, to get moving with this investigation and, and see what it might le- where it might lead us. Assemblyman Mark Butler joining us on the Talk of the Town at 100.7 FM WUTQ. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I think that's very interesting. I know the conversation started to ensue quite some time. Maybe uh, August we had uh, some of the folks from the Cuyahora Valley uh, group yeah. on talking about this. And our senior senator, Chuck Schumer, I know, got involved and was asking some questions. But, uh, you know, back to that Air Force Research Laboratory, I think that was the focal point at that 
time. And a lot of people may not understand what goes on there. Do you have a, a better idea of really what is taking place nowadays for that area? Uh, I, I was a little bit surprised because when uh, this began, uh, I presume, like many, that since Griffiths is uh, – taking a much lesser role uh, that, that they were kind of shut down. But the latest information I have is that those uh, sites are still operational. And, and Assemblyman, I actually live not too far away myself um, from that area, and I know it's always been some kind of eerie kind of thought of, of what goes on there because the folks in the area really don't know. And there are some trails through there for ATVs, <laughs> excuse me, and whatnot. And if you, if you get too close, they're right there. There are some very specific signs that let you know if you get too close, mm -hmm. uh, you will not be uh, received warmly. I, I think that's pretty clear. Yeah. Well, Assemblyman, good luck in Albany, and uh, keep us abreast of the situation. I will, uh, if there are any uh, major breakthroughs, I will be sure to let you guys know. Uh, we don't know exactly uh, what the course of this meeting will be, but uh, uh, hopefully, uh, if nothing else, we'll at least get an agreement from the health that they're going to uh, pursue this a little more vigorously than it appears they have been to this point. All right. Great. All right. Uh, happy New Year to you. Yeah. All right. Great talking to you guys. Stay warm. Always a pleasure. <laughs> All, All right. Bye-bye. Right.